Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Kelly and this is a channel about puzzles. Today I'm very excited because I have finished the 9,000 piece Ravensburger Disney Museum puzzle. I'm so excited, it's finally done. I want to do another puzzle. Let's take a look at this puzzle. This is the third video in the series, so if you haven't seen the first two, I'll put the link in the description down below and you can check them out first. At the end of the last video, I'd finished all but seven of the frames. So first we're gonna take a look at those seven frames. Obviously they were left last for a reason. They were the most intricate and complicated ones. And in addition to those seven frames, I did have a lot of one-off pieces on most of the frames that were still missing. So in this section coming up, you'll see there's a lot of me jumping around to different sections just filling in those missing pieces. To finish these last few frames, I actually laid out all the pieces I had left on my table and kind of just went, you know, section by section, portrait by portrait, filling in all the missing pieces. For the remaining portraits, it was pretty easy at that point to pick out the ones that I knew were going to be part of each frame. It was just a matter of putting it together. Some of them proved to be quite tricky, which I'll go into a bit later. And you'll see in the footage, I actually left notes on post-its for myself on the different boards with different sections of the puzzles. And this was because for some of the pictures, the piece that filled in the bottom of the frame on one portrait actually filled in the top of another portrait as well. But at that point, I didn't want to start combining the portraits. So what I actually did was I kind of kept all of those pieces on one portrait and then on the other one I'll just write a little note that says this one is done all the pieces are on this portrait and that was just a kind of quick way for me to look and see that it's done I don't need to start looking for those pieces again which is great when there's 12 poster boards each with multiple portraits on it it's just a great easy way to see when I, okay, I know that one's done. I don't need to go back to it. You'll also see that I move pretty quickly between the different boards and the different sections. And this was just because I didn't want to get bored. I didn't want to get stuck. If I found myself sitting there staring at it, not able to find another piece, we're done with this board. Let's move on to the next one. Don't want to waste any more time. If you have any questions throughout the video, please put them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And I'd also love to know if you've ever done a big puzzle like this before and what you thought of it, if you'd ever do one again, or even if this is something that you'd like to do, I'd love to hear about it. So in this video today, I will be finishing the frames, starting to assemble the puzzle, filling in all the blue areas, and finally assembling the puzzle. And then at the very end, I'll have a bunch of stats as well as the podcasts I listened to while I was working on this because I worked on it for quite a bit. So let's get right into the puzzle.
So it is much too hot to do a proper on-camera check-in right now. So I'm just going to kind of do this off-the-cuff one. I apologize. So since my last check-in, I had the seven like big gold frames left to do. And I wanted to share my progress on them because I've done pretty well this week. It's Saturday right now. So first we have Pinocchio. I made really good progress on Pinocchio. It helped that it was quite circular and quite distinctive. Um, the colors definitely felt a lot different than they did in the picture, which was curious. This one's pretty close to done, obviously. I'm still missing some pieces. But pretty happy with that one because I was quite worried about that one. Next up we have the Dumbo and the Pocahontas. These ones I just finished about an hour ago. These frames are like super intricate, but I thought they were a lot bigger than they ended up being because they're only two to three pieces across. So I didn't think I had enough pieces, but once I was actually putting it together and saw how small it was, I was able to finish it a lot faster. Still some pieces missing, of course. These ones also have a little crown detail at the top, which is cute. And here's Bambi. The Bambi one was quite difficult. Obviously, I have not made as much progress as I hoped. It's The pieces are really hard to distinguish for these ones. The Bambi one has cute butterflies on the edges, which is a nice little detail. And then finally we have the Jungle Book, Alice in Wonderland, and Snow White. These ones have obviously proved to have been the most challenging ones out of everything. The Jungle Book and the Alice in Wonderland ones are pretty close to done. The Snow White one is taking a while. Really have not made much progress. As you can see, I'm still missing, you know, three pieces here. I'm sure they're all on the board here somewhere, or most of them anyway. Yeah, so this, the Snow White one and the Bambi one, those are the two that I had the most work left to do. So with those two that are left to do, there's not much more left to do before assembling and putting together the blue pieces. So I think what I'm going to do right now, because I still have quite a few of the gold pieces left, I'm actually going to go through every single portrait because most portraits are still missing a few gold pieces. I'm going to go through each one and see if I can find those missing pieces, because I'm sure they're here on the table somewhere. I think what I'm gonna have to do is reshuffle the portraits so that each board has a section of the puzzle. I had initially wanted to put it together on the floor at this point, but I think it's just, it's gonna be too big for me to put all the pieces in, and it's quite hot, and I don't wanna be crawling around on the puzzle and standing up and sitting down. It's too hot to do that. So I'm just gonna... Have I been totally off camera the whole time? Yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to go through all the frames again and try and narrow down some of the pieces and then hopefully finish up that Snow White and the Bambi one as well. Maybe tonight, we'll see. And then tomorrow I will probably shoot some more stuff for you guys, and then I will start putting together the different quadrants. So that will mean taking apart some of the portraits I've already done, um, just reorganizing the puzzle so that I can work on the blue sections in between. I think that's really the best way to do it. I'm probably gonna have to lie all the blue pieces out on the table by size, which will take me quite a while to do. So, We'll see. I thought I might be able to finish this tomorrow, but now that I'm kind of talking it through, I don't think I'm going to be able to. But that's okay. 
if I don't finish it, that's also totally fine. I think if I don't get it done tomorrow, then I'll definitely get it done next weekend. I can't find this stupid piece. I swear it's not here. I've looked like a hundred times. It's not here. I have a few piles on other boards. Hopefully it's there. It's also possible it's fallen on the floor. I hope I find it. Two days later. One problem I came up against when I was finishing up the frames is due to how the puzzle is cut. The puzzle is itself two halves and then each half has the same puzzle cut twice. So in total the same puzzle cut happens four times. That means in theory a piece from this part of the puzzle can also fit in this part of the puzzle. And that was something that I ended up being quite frustrated by because it started to come up at this point quite a bit. It wasn't really a problem with the portraits because the image is completely different. But once I was dealing with gold frames that were exactly the same, and of course the blue background, which was quite tricky, that's where it became a real problem. So this is one bag, right? And then this bag has the same cut twice. This and this is the same cut. So right now the piece I'm working on is right here. So it's equivalent, if this is the middle, it would be right here, which makes sense for the color of the image. So there's where I'm working. I thought it was right, but it's not. It fits perfectly, but it's not right. So I just pulled out the Bambi section, and sure enough, that piece does not fit there. It fits, but that's not where it goes. And now I'm wondering, all these other missing pieces I have, is that where they are? They're in the wrong part of the puzzle. So I've finished the portraits, however, I have a few that are missing pieces and I have two extra pieces. So I've just started going through and looking to try and figure out where these two pieces go. And I thought everything was in the right spot, but actually there's another one that's wrong. So now I need to figure out where this one actually goes. Okay, so this piece was accidentally put here. 
So it's either here, which I don't think it is, because that doesn't look like the right coloring. Could be here. Okay, now I'm just confused. Okay, so this piece didn't exactly go where I expected. It went here. So I still have that piece missing and that piece missing. I'm hoping they're on the floor. That's a cat. There's one, and there's the other. I thought I had them all. I think there's one more. Okay, Mingo. Mingo, where's the other piece? Um, I can't find that one. I hope it's in the box of blue pieces, because if it's not, I don't know where it is. Maybe it is on the floor and I just can't see it. It is a blue carpet. The pieces are pretty much blue. Yeah. So there is a line all the way down the center of the puzzle. As you can see here. And this isn't actually the split of the puzzle. The split, I think, is actually one or two pieces over. Yeah, because it's about, it's about here. Um, so this Beauty the Beast one, I thought it was so smart putting those pieces in while I was building it. But now that I'm looking at it closely, those two are a different color than the other ones. Those four are different colors than the other ones. And that's a different color. Which means that those ones probably actually go up here somewhere, not down here. I was initially not really sure how I was going to be working on assembling the final puzzle. I thought that I might put it all out on the floor and kind of work on each blue section as that went along. Um, the day where I finally reached that part of the process was in the middle of a heat wave here and it was really hot and just the thought of having to basically crawl around on the floor for the next few days did not interest me. So what I ended up doing was I actually figured out that the puzzle will actually separate quite nicely into eight 20 by 30 inch poster boards. So each quarter of the puzzle essentially fit really nicely on two puzzle boards. It's about 30 pieces across each. So this is one quadrant. It was split in two like this, same with here split in two so it took me a little while just to kind of figure out the right way to assemble those pieces but as you can see once i did that it actually worked really really well and i actually wish that i'd done it a lot sooner more as i was finishing the, the portraits actually i think that would have made it a lot easier to work with a lot easier to keep track of where things were because i kind of had the portraits before just wherever they could fit on a poster board. But this was much more organized. And like I said, I wish I had done it sooner. Once I had moved all the portraits into their different sections on the poster boards, I laid it all out just so I could visualize how much had been done. And as you'll see, I had done so much more than I thought. It was really difficult to see it when it was all kind of scattered amongst different poster boards. But once it was all organized and partially put together, I was so happy to see that I'd actually completed a really good amount of puzzle and finally I could see that the end was in sight, that there was a way for me to finish this puzzle. Because when I was just working on it on different poster boards, it really felt like I was just going to be working on this puzzle forever.
So here is one of the hazards of doing a puzzle like this. The puzzle is the same cut four times, so sometimes you end up with a piece that fits perfectly, but doesn't actually go there. And I think this one doesn't go here either. That would make more sense. It's very similar. That's the right piece. <laughs> Now that I had the puzzle separated into different quadrants, I could really sit down and focus on just working on that one section of the puzzle. There were a lot of variations in the blue pieces, so the first thing I did was I separated out all the light colored blues. Um, there were only two or three sections on the puzzle that had that really light blue color, so I was able to focus on those and, and just getting any sections done at this point, you know, felt great. Um, when I finished the first entire section, it was a real accomplishment. And in fact, once I finished that first poster board of the sections, which I think was the snow white one, that was, I was like, yes, I'm going to finish this puzzle. And after that, I moved a lot faster because I could finally, finally feel like I was finishing this puzzle.
with the eight sections. Um, as you can see here, I've got all the pieces sorted by size because really that's the only way I'm going to finish it. I've got the two and twos here, the fours and the fours, and then this one has the three and ones and the three and ones. So this is all the pieces I have left. Um, the next section I'm going to tackle is here, and the two biggest sections I have left are still those two sections with the flooring. They're in the pile right now, but it's definitely still like these two sections here are definitely going to be the last two I've finished. There's quite a few pieces in there. But I figure let's get the smaller sections done first because the less pieces I have to work with to do the last sections, the easier it's going to be. <laughs> sections almost done. Just a few pieces here and there that I can't seem to locate. This is all the pieces I have left. And these are the two sections that are basically the only two sections I have left. This is so close! <laughs>
problems I'm having right now as I'm finishing up these two sections is that because this puzzle is cut four times, pieces fit into more than one spot, and all the green is slightly different, but it can be really hard to tell if it's wrong unless you look in a certain light. Like I can't, I'm not sure if it shows up on my camera, but I'm pretty sure that this doesn't actually belong here. I might be wrong though, but it's just like, it's just ever so slightly not the right color. I won't really know until I try and put it in, well, hopefully I'll find its match somewhere. I also have another spot on a section that I'm only missing two pieces, and I have two pieces that fit in that section, which are these two, but they are not the right color, which means that there are these two pieces somewhere already in the puzzle in the wrong spot. So hopefully once I'm putting it all together at the end, I'll be able to find those. It's like 1.30, but I just wanted to let you know that I have finished the puzzle. So, like I said, it's finished. However, there's a few little post-it dots that I've put on the puzzle, and that's spots where the pieces don't match the pieces around it. Unfortunately, like these three spots, um, they're not the same pieces, they're different pieces. So I don't quite know what's happened here. I'm going to investigate a little bit further in the morning in natural light. And maybe it will resolve itself. I assume that there's other pieces somewhere that are also wrong. But right now it's a bit of a conundrum. So I'm pretty excited to be finished this puzzle. It's been almost, it's been a month and a half. And I'm ready to work on something else. I'm ready to work on a normal sized puzzle. Um, I'll have more information in a moment, as you'll see, about the stats of the puzzle and my final thoughts. Um, but overall, I'm pretty proud of myself for finishing this. It's kind of insane. I can't believe I did it. I bought it thinking I wouldn't be able to do it. Well, when I bought it, it was much bigger than anything I'd ever attempted before. But yeah, I'm pretty happy that it's done now.
so I was totally perplexed because this piece did not match and I could not find the corresponding piece at all. And now I'm setting up the puzzle for the final photos. And look what I found, an ever so slightly different color, ever so slightly. Okay, I think that's the right piece now. Same with over here, I think. I hope so. I swear, the blue on this puzzle is so tricky. I didn't even realize that this one was wrong until just now, because I'm looking for this one. And that is probably it. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. That looks a little better. Same with here, you can't even tell where it came from. I've actually found another one that's in the wrong spot. It's so subtle, but it's definitely in the wrong spot. Weirdly enough, this one is actually like two pieces over from another one I had to replace. And I've actually found it. So it's here again. That's the piece. It's so subtle. Only in this lighting I would have noticed it. You can barely tell the difference, but it is the right piece now. So now that I've finished the puzzle, here are some things that I didn't like. The first thing, when I was sorting, there was so much puzzle dust, so much that my hands were turning blue. Um, it was gross. I guess I could have dealt with that by, I've seen people like use a colander or something, like dump the pieces in a colander before they start working with the puzzle. So you could do that and that would get rid of a lot of it. I didn't do that. Yeah, a lot of puzzle dust. Ravensburger always has some puzzle dust, but obviously 9,000 pieces, so much puzzle dust. Another problem I had was the boards I bought weren't completely flat. They had a bit of a, they were just like a little bit curved. 
I did buy them at the dollar store, Dollarama. So it wasn't, you know, I didn't buy the best quality boards. Although I don't think they would have been better from anywhere else, to be honest. I did try to buy them from Staples initially, but they didn't have them in stock at the time. And I probably could have put a bit of effort in at the beginning to try and, and like force that curve out of it just by like putting heavy stuff on top of it probably. But I wanted to start working on the puzzle, so I didn't didn't bother. And it wasn't it wasn't too much of a problem, but it was definitely something to watch out for because if you hit it the wrong way, it just goes sliding right off the card. But overall, I found this puzzle really enjoyable to do. It wasn't a hard puzzle. The most challenging part was the wooden flooring, which was one of the first things I did. And I'm glad I did it first because if I had had to do that section much later after I'd finished one of the portraits, I would have been so frustrated because to be so close and then just stuck on that flooring section. So I recommend you do that section near the beginning if you can. But like I said, it's not a difficult puzzle. There's lots of variety in the portraits. It's just the sheer quantity and size of the puzzle is the challenge. And I really recommend you separating it into different sections while you're working on it. Even in hindsight, I wouldn't have separated the bags because I liked having that just one big pile. It felt like more of an accomplishment to do all of it at once rather than section and one section. But I think if you found it quite daunting, you could actually sort the pieces into quadrants, kind of like I did later in the puzzle. And then you could put together the portraits kind of in each quadrant. That might make it go a bit faster. I don't know. It's just a different way of doing it. I don't even know if I would do it that way if I were to do it again. But on that note, would I do it again and would I do it differently? So first, I would definitely do it again. It was enjoyable. It was a lot of work, but it was an enjoyable puzzle. I'm not going to do it again this year for sure. Um, I was thinking maybe next year I could do a kind of how fast can I do a 9,000 piece puzzle video. So that, that, could, that could be kind of fun. Um, if I could dedicate the time to do it because this, you know, I kind of stretched it out over quite a few weeks. So if I dedicated the time, okay, I have to finish it by this day. I might be able to do it in a faster time. And I think as well, the trick to doing it faster would to be do a much more advanced sorting at the beginning because my sorting was very basic. You know, I just sorted all the portraits into one pile and then worked on them all at once. Um, if you were to sort that into different sections right at the beginning, that might make it go faster. It's hard to say really. I know for me, I don't really like sorting. So I would much rather just get into the puzzle. One thing I would do differently with the sorting is I would put more work into the frames because there was so many gold frames and it all looks the same. Now that I've done the puzzle, I can kind of pick out different frames from a pile. And there are some that are quite distinctive. So you see them, you know, right away. The, the Mickey one in particular, the, and that's the same as the Snow White one. As, sorry, as the Sleeping Beauty one. Um, the Little Mermaid one is another one that's quite distinctive. Yeah, there's quite a few that are quite distinctive that I think that you could probably pull those out and then work on those frames at the same time you do that portrait which maybe could make it go a bit faster. What am I gonna do with the puzzle? I guess I'm gonna take it apart. I don't really want, I mean, I definitely don't want to tape it up or glue it together. Um, I don't like doing that with puzzles. It takes them completely out of circulation and I just, I don't like doing that, especially one that's a bit rarer of this size, you know, just because I'm not gonna do it again right away you know, it's, it'll be there if someone wants to borrow it for a few months and work on it, or if I want to do it again, or I could even, you know, sell it on to someone else if I wanted to. But in general, I don't like gluing together puzzles or taping together puzzles. Um, but that being said, now that it's together on the floor, 
I don't want to take it apart <laughs> because it was so much work. So I, th I think what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to split it into different sections that will fit in the box. That's what I think I'm going to do. What might end up happening is I start doing that and it just becomes a bit of a mess. And then I just pff, take it all apart. I hope not, but that might be what ends up happening. To be honest, I'm really scared to take it apart just because it's such a accomplishment. I don't want to take it apart. <laughs> But I have lots of photos and I'm going to shoot some more footage as well before I take it apart. So we'll see what I do. <laughs> I have another complaint. I forgot. Two of my favorite Disney movies are missing from this puzzle and I am personally offended. Hercules and The Emperor's New Groove. Where are those, where are those people? Where are those portraits? If you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button down below and subscribe and turn on notifications so you always know whenever I have new videos posted. Okay, and finally the stats for completing this 9,000 piece puzzle. So I started the puzzle on Friday, June 24th, 2022. I finished the puzzle Thursday, August 11th, 2022. Very, very late. Technically the 12th, but we're gonna call it the 11th. In a total, out of those 49 days, I worked on the puzzle on 28 of those days, mostly on weekends. It was a total of 73 hours. I got that time from the time lapse I was recording, and then I kind of did some math to figure out what the time lapse worked out to in time. So it's kind of rough. It might not be exact, but around 73 hours, give or take a couple hours. And then that breaks down into five hours for sorting, six hours for floor and ceiling sections. Sorry, I have my notes down below. That's why I keep looking down. The portraits was about 22 hours. Yeah. The frames was 25 hours. And the blue section was 16 hours. And again, that's spread out over 28 days. There's quite a few days there where I only worked on it for maybe two hours, but there's also a few days there where I would work on it for probably close to eight hours. So it's quite, it's quite varied, but in total 73 hours. I don't know if that's a good time for this size of puzzle. Hopefully it is. I don't know. That's my time. Maybe if I do this again next year, I can try and beat that time. That can be my goal. And then the podcasts I listen to, if that's something that you're interested in, I listen to Cooper Island, Stolen, Surviving St. Michael's. Those are both podcasts about the residential schools here in Canada, which is a really important issue that if you're not aware of, you should look into. It's quite a dark stain on Canada's history, but it's something that we should acknowledge. I also listen to The Village, which is about murders in gay communities, both in Toronto and in Montreal. And then finally, the majority of my puzzling time was two true crime podcasts. Of course, first one is called Small Town Dicks, which is detectives come from different parts of the country and tell stories of their favorite cases. And Case File, which is probably a well-known true crime podcast out of Australia. They just kind of recap different cases. So if you're interested in any of those, I've put a link down below to all of them. And if you have any questions about this video or just puzzling in general, please put them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And please hit the like button down below and hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you always know when I have a new video posted. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.